Well, hey, guys and gals, wanted to talk to you real quick about one of my recent reviews uh, from Vivor. And you can find all my reviews for Vivor and from Amazon at tspaz.com. Today's item of the day, the Vor pool tape. Now, I'm going to tell you that this stuff is an industry standard, and Vivor is probably just buying this from somebody and putting their logo on it, which I have no problem with. This is something I've used this stuff a lot in my past for its intended purpose. What is this for? Well, this you'll you'll either get conduit that already has this in it, or you put a piece of conduit in somewhere and you'll do something like take a a uh, piece of plastic baggie and make like a balloon out of it and suck it through with a vacuum or blow it through with a compressor or something to that effect. And then you use it to pull cables into conduits. There's other things that's done with it in the industry, but that is the primary purpose of it. And when I used to do work like that and be connected to people, even after I quit that did it, I used to get this stuff for free. So even though I'm doing this as a product review and telling you, you might want to pick up a roll of this stuff, which is about for about 318 feet, it's about 26 bucks. So it's not expensive, but you may be able to get it for free. If you know anybody in the telco installation infrastructure space, they probably can get you as much of this as you will ever need. And that's how I originally started using it. When I saw it on the Favor website, my, my representative was on vacation. So I know if I said, hey, send me a roll of this, they would have done it for free. I bought this roll, spent my money on it. Generally speaking, if I won't spend my money on something, I wouldn't ask you to either, but I, I'm going to take free product because I don't hate money. I did this because we're going right into garden season and I wanted you guys to know about how fantastic this stuff is for your gardens, especially you guys who are vertical gardeners or aspire to be vertical gardeners. So in my primary garden space, I have um, four walls made with uh, uprights from uh, landscape timbers and cattle panels that are each 12 feet long. So I have a total of, what is that, 24, 48 linear feet of vertical gardening space, and I still do more. One of the main candidates for doing more is some of the vining squashes I grow like Trumbachino. And those vines can get 20, 30 foot or longer. And I want that wall space for things like my tomatoes and my beans and stuff like that. So what I'll often do with those is when they get up to the top of that, uh, that, that wall that I built, the cattle panel, I may train them across it a little bit. But I want to, again, really keep most of the space open for the other plants. And I'll take something like this and I'll come off of that and I'll go literally up into a tree with it. And then I've had this stuff holding, you know, multiple 12, 13, 14 pound squashes uh, with the vine twined around it going across gaps. And I'll be doing that this year. And I'm sure I'll do some follow up video and show you this. I've done it with uh, in my aviary. I, the one year I just had buttloads of uh, spaghetti squash, you know, that are you know as big as a you know, huge hanging all the way down the center of it. The other thing it's good for, and it, you know, you want strength for that. This is as far as strength, a little bit of overkill, but just like tying peppers and tomatoes and stuff up to plant stakes, it's great for that. It's really easy to work with. It's really easy to tie knots into. It's not strength. It's pretty good. If you're doing a heavy burden and you're doing, you know, overhand knots or something, if you're not a knot expert or something like that, what I really recommend is where you tie it off then tie a security knot, like a single overhand security knot that'll pull up against that knot. That'll make sure that you don't have any loss. One thing to know about it, if you're binding stuff together that you do not want to move or sag, you want to get really tight right from the beginning. This It's, it's hard to feel, but there is a little bit of give in it. Now, most of the times I've seen people make trellises and stuff out of it, and they say it eventually sags. It's, it's the thing you're attached to, not this. It's not that elastic, but, you know, over 20, 30 feet, there is some give. That is des designed into it because, again, its intended purpose is pulling things like fiber optic cables into inch and a quarter, quarter poly conduit. That, that's what this is for. And how strong is it? Well, I've seen guys, smartly and dumbly, both, uh, pulling in long fiber runs and things like that. And you put a what's called a, a, a cable sock on the cable so you're – you're pulling against the shielding, not against the stuff that's inside it. And then this attaches to that. And usually that's in there and wrapped up in a knot. And then this is taped because you don't want it coming off in the middle. You use a lot of labor that way. And I've seen them literally put it on like the hitch of a truck. And the smart guys, like they're running idle in a field and they're just letting off the brake and very slowly pulling it. Uh, 
And I have seen people do dumb things too, like pull way too fast and create friction problems and things like that. But you know what I've never seen? This stuff actually break. I pulled a truck out of a mud puddle with some of this, not this particular brand, but some of this stuff. So this is way strong. So my other suggestion is, as a prepper, one of the things that you really need to have in your preps is a good cordage. Now, I'm a big fan of tarred bank line. You can carry an awful lot of it. I mean, you know, this much length in tarred bank line can be carried, you know, balled up in your hand. But it has its limitations. It's nowhere near as strong as this. It does nowhere near the things that this can do. This is you know, hanging hammocks, uh, suspending any, just about anything. Like the strength of it, again, is phenomenal. It's not Kevlar or anything. It's made out of polyester. And that's why when you feel it, it is, it is not what you would expect. I think when people see a reel of this on a website and you can't touch it, you would think this is very stiff. Again, this is very soft. And that's what makes it great in the garden for plants. One of my best friends, a dude named David, and I both agree this is the gold standard for plant tying. So, yeah, it's not expensive. It's readily available. Vivor has it. You can get it with an additional 5% off with the link in the bottom of this video. And I'll take you over to my write-up. You can learn some more about it. If you have any questions, let me know. But it's pretty straightforward, right? It's, it's cordage. It's flat, long, strong cordage. And if you, like, I don't know if you're growing super-duper uh, – uh, pumpkins that you're stringing up in the air or something like that, and, and you want stronger, they actually make it in a 2,500-pound uh, version as well, that, where this is 1,800. I, I think it's overkill either way, and paying even a little bit more for something you absolutely don't need in any way, shape, or form, I don't think it's a good idea. But get yourself some of this. Start using it in your garden, using it other places. Um, it's also, it, it handles the weather really well. Now it's polyester. It will eventually fray and break down if it's exposed to the elements, but I do have some that's been in place for five years and it's still functioning just fine. So with that guys, take care again, check the link in the video notes below. And if you have any questions, let me know.